So cephalosporins are a huge pain in the ass to learn. And if you've ever cracked open a textbook or looked through a question bank, you know that cephalosporins are divided up into five different generations, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And it's actually really high yield and important to know which specific cephalosporin falls into each of these five different categories because the five different categories are used for different indications. They can do different things like some can cross the blood brain barrier and some can treat pseudomonas and some are used for respiratory infections and other are used for urinary tract infections. But all of that high yield clinical information aside, the reason that this is so difficult to learn is because yes, you have five different generations, but all of these drugs start with CEPH. So separating them from one, two, three, four, and fifth generations is really challenging. And you do need to know specifically which cephalosporin falls into which category. So the focus of this video today is to show you my really cool, simple, efficient, high yield mnemonic for knowing which cephalosporin falls into which category. This is gonna be a breeze and super easy to learn. So bear with me, pay attention, and by the end of this video, you'll be an expert on the cephalosporins. So before we get into categorizing which cephalosporin is in which generation, let's just do a brief overview of this class of antibiotics. So cephalosporins are very closely related to the penicillins. The mechanism of cephalosporins for all of them, regardless of which generation we're talking about, is that they inhibit cell wall synthesis in a bactericidal manner. Okay, so they're bactericidal. They're actually killing the bacteria. Now, the adverse drug reactions for the cephalosporins are relatively unique, and I would recommend that you know this list. You can get hypersensitivity reactions, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, disulfiram-like reaction, which is always a test favorite, so definitely know that one, vitamin K deficiency, and what I'll refer to as nephrotoxic synergy, specifically with the other antibiotic class, the aminoglycoside. So all that means is that if you have somebody on a cephalosporin and an aminoglycoside, then you basically double or increase the risk of nephrotoxicity. So cephalosporins potentiate the nephrotoxicity that you get with aminoglycosides. Now, <clears throat> now again, this is just an overview. So I would recommend that you know the mechanism and know the adverse drug reactions. But the bulk of today's video and our focus is going to be on this slide. How do we know which specific cephalosporins are first generations, second generations, third generations, fourth generations, and fifth generations. Because after all, if you don't know which specific subtype or specific cephalosporin falls into each category, how can you know which one treats UTIs versus respiratory infections versus pseudomonas versus can cross the blood-brain barrier? All of that clinical information that you should probably know comes secondary to simply being able to categorize these into different generations. So here is how we're going to learn this. And I'm gonna give you the mnemonic first, and then we'll go through the generations one at a time, and I'll show you how easy it is to apply the mnemonic and learn how to categorize the cephalosporins. So here's the mnemonic. As ale, two we're basically gonna skip because we're gonna use that as the process of elimination. Three, really simply, the mnemonic is three. Four, very simply, the mnemonic is four. And for the fifth generation, the mnemonic is TAR. And if this makes zero sense to you right now, which it should because I've not given you any context or background information, bear with me. This will all make sense. So let's start with the first generation cephalosporins. And the mnemonic, as you see on this slide, is as ale. So as ale. We're talking about first generation cephalosporins. Now, why is the mnemonic as ale? Well, the two drugs are cephazolin and cephal. Exin, so Ceph Ale and Ceph Azalin, so as an ale. And, you know, for this mnemonic to work, I think of walking into a bar or maybe going over somebody's house. And the first thing that you ask is, do you have any ale, right? Do they have anything for you to drink? Do they as any ale? As for Ceph Azalin and ale for Ceph Ale Exin. And the reason that this is easy to remember is because it's the first thing you should ask. So ale and as, or as any ale, is a first generation cephalosporin. So imagine you're going out on a Friday night, you walk into your friend's house, maybe you're pre-gaming a little bit, the first thing you should ask is, hey, do you as any ale? As for cephazolin and ale for cephalexin. 
So first generation is the first thing you should ask. As any ale, Seth Azalin, Seth Ale Exon. Okay, easy, done. Don't think anything more of it. First generation, remember, what's the first thing you should ask? Do you add any ale? Because everybody wants a little bit to drink. All right, so that's our first generation cephalosporins. Again, the focus of the video is just to categorize which specific cephalosporins fall into which category. I'll point out some minor clinical tidbits as we go, but let's focus on just categorization. So moving on, we're actually going to skip the second generation because the second generation is just a clusterfuck of different cephalosporins. And if you look in any review textbook, you see how absolutely horrible and horrendous their mnemonics are. They make no sense. They don't apply to the word cephalosporin. They hardly apply to the second or two in second generation. It's terrible. I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to insult you by giving you any bad mnemonics. So we're simply going to skip it. And at the very end of this video, You'll just know by the process of elimination that if they ask you about a cephalosporin that doesn't fall into first generation, third generation, fourth generation, or fifth generation, it has to be second by the process of elimination. So we're simply going to skip the second generation cephalosporins. Okay? So first generation, what's the first thing you do? You ask, do you as any ale? Ceph azelin, ceph ale exin. Second generation, we skip because we're going to use the process of elimination. Now let's talk about the third generation. So because it's the third generation, the mnemonic is three. And this is so beautifully constructed, really easy to remember. First, let me tell you what the three cephalosporins are. You have ceftriaxone, cefotaxime, and ceftazidime, okay? Ceftriaxone, cefotaxime, and ceftazidime. So the three things are tri, tax, and taz. Now, you're probably wondering, how do I remember this? How do I relate that to the mnemonic three? And therefore, by extension, the third generation cephalosporins. So the first one's really easy. Tri means three. Tri is the prefix for three. Ceph, tri, axone remind, always reminded me of ceph, three, axone. So it's a third generation cephalosporin. Cephotaxime, well, you do your taxes in the third month of the calendar year. So here in America, most people do their taxes in March, and March is the third month of the year. So tax, cephotaxime, you do your taxes in the third month of the year, and third reminds me of third generation. So super easy. You just have to know how Americans do their taxes, that's all. And ceftazidime, well, Taz always made me think of the Tasmanian devil, which literally, aside from the Looney Tunes depiction of it, is a small like rodent thing that is uh, found in Australia. So I always thought about three Tasmanian devils, which I literally had this picture in my notebook when I was in medical school. So three Tasmanian devils, Taz for Ceftazidime, and three of them reminds me of the third generation. So Ceph triaxone, tri means three. Cephotaxime, you do your taxes for Cephotaxime in the third calendar month of the year, or in March. And ceftazidime, taz for Tasmanian devils, and here's a picture of three of them. So these are the drugs in the third generation of the cephalosporins. Done, easy, crushing it, let's keep it rolling. So quick review so far, first generation, what's the first thing you ask? Do you as any ale? Cephazolin, ceph ale exin. We're going to skip the second generation, and at the very end of this lecture, if you ever get a practice question that is asking you about a cephalosporin, and you either don't recognize it or it doesn't fall into the other mnemonics for first, third, fourth, or fifth, then you'll just guess second, and chances are you'll be right. And then for our third generation, the mnemonic is three. Remember, it's the, it's the cephalosporins that have tri in the middle of the name, tax in the middle of the name because you do your taxes in the third month of the year, and Taz, because the Tasmanian Devils, there were three of them in the picture that I put on the slide. We're crushing it, guys. Super proud of you. I hope you're paying attention because you're learning one of the most difficult conceptualizations of pharmacology that you could possibly be asked on USMLE or Comlex. Fourth generation, let's keep it rolling. So just like for how the third generation, the mnemonic was three, for the fourth generation, the mnemonic is four. And there's really only one drug that you need to know for this class, and it's cefepime. And instead of saying cefepime, I want you to say cephorpime, cephorpime, instead of cefepime. And four should obviously cue you that we're talking about a fourth generation cephalosporin. 
Now, the really high-yield clinical tidbit for the fourth-generation cephalosporin, cefepime, or if you're memorizing the mnemonic, cephorpime, is that it actually covers pseudomonas, okay? So you get pseudomonal coverage from cefepime. And it's really easy to remember that because there's four syllables in pseudomonas, pseudomonas. And because there's four syllables in pseudomonas, you should remember that you get pseudomonas coverage from the fourth generation cephalosporin, which is cephorpime. So we're gonna put all of this information together. Cephapime or cephorpime is the only cephalosporin that gives you coverage against pseudomonas, which has four syllables. I know it's probably annoying to hear me repeat that so much, but you gotta drill this into your brain because if you're getting a test question and the patient has some risk factor for pseudomonas, the answer is gonna be cephapime because you gotta cover against it, right? should make perfect sense. So that's the really simple fourth generation cephalosporin, cephapime, cephorpime, and pseudomonas has four syllables. So we cover against it with the fourth generation cephalosporin, cephorpime or cephapime. Fifth generation is our last category here. And the mnemonic is TAR. And I know what you're thinking. Why the hell is the mnemonic TAR? Well, the drug here is ceftaroline. Ceftaroline, so tar for tar in the middle of ceftaroline. And the way that you remember this is that tar should remind you of the University of North Carolina because they're called the UNC Tar Heels and this is their logo, right? It's a foot, so they're the Tar Heels. And what you may notice is that the Tar Heels logo or the foot has five toes, which should remind you that this is a fifth generation cephalosporin. So the mnemonic is tar, and why is the mnemonic TAR? Because ceftarolin is the drug. And the TAR heals for ceftarolin has five toes. And that reminds you that we're talking about the fifth generation cephalosporin. So we're done, guys. That is the mnemonic here. First generation as ale. Third generation is three. Fourth generation is four. Fifth generation is TAR. If there's anything that doesn't fall into one of those four categories, then it's got to be the second generation by the process of elimination. So here's our summary slide. We've got the generation, the drugs, and my mnemonic. So here we go. First generation, you have cefazolin and cefalexin. Do you as any ale? That's the first thing you should ask. Second generation, we're skipping. Third generation, the mnemonic is three. Tri means three. You do your taxes in the third month of the calendar year. And three Tasmanian devils for ceftazidim. Fourth generation, cefepime, cephorpime, and it covers against pseudomonas because there's four syllables in pseudomonas. Fifth generation, the mnemonic is tar because the UNC tar heels and the tar heel logo has five toes. So five for fifth generation and tar for tar heels and ceftaroline. This is the summary slide. If you memorize this, you're going to get probably 90% or more of these questions correct. You absolutely need to know which cephalosporin goes into which category. And it's only once you understand that can you take this one step further when you're actually studying and start to apply concepts like which generation treats UTIs, which generation treats uh, respiratory infections, et cetera, et cetera. But this is where you've got to start. So start here. Learn how to categorize them, and it'll make your learning of these antibiotics, these cephalosporins, that much easier. If you liked this video, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and if you feel so inclined, check out the description of this video and click my Patreon link to set up a monthly donation to support my channel. Love you guys. Keep crushing it.